Brian, <clears throat> LeBron James is up to his old tricks. Once again, he did this years ago with Andrew Wiggins, but at least with Wiggins, he still let him play basketball. He just said, you couldn't play basketball with me in Cleveland. This time, he's taking Chet Holmgren out of the league before the kid even gets a chance to play. <laughs> just joking, obviously, but Chet Holmgren will miss the 2022-23 season uh, because of a Liz Frank injury in his right foot. It happened while he was guarding LeBron James at the crossover, crossover, pro-am event. Uh, that was held up in Seattle, the one that got canceled by halftime because they went to a piece of crap gym with no air conditioning on a hot, humid day and thought it'd be a good idea to run a basketball game and think that there's no way any of that humidity would stick inside the court. Well, it did, and just in that one half alone, it was enough to end the season for who would have been one of the top three, uh, you know, betting prospects for Rookie of the Year. So Holmgren not playing at all, uh, obviously... Not good news for Oklahoma City, but, you know, if you spin it the way that other people have, like our own Paul Roshan has, as far as the kid can just go get bigger and stronger now because he doesn't can't, can't play basketball, so you might as well lift weights and get uh, get some meat on that frame. But uh, obviously not good news for Holmgren, not yeah, good news for Oklahoma City. It is such a great idea for Chet to be putting on a tremendous amount of weight when he can't walk and then he tries to walk again and his feet and his body are like what the hell are you doing to me like what are you like you, you've never weighed this much before it's it's obviously terrible news and i do think it's concerning for the future because with any big guys whether they're big or skinny because kevin durant had something similar early in his career with foot, with foot issues and everyone thought oh like this is going to be a guy because he's so tall the, the feet are never a good thing to injure, and Kevin Durant's been fine for the most part. Uh, you know, obviously, he tore his Achilles, which is totally separate from from the other thing. But, did, like, if you're just a tall dude, you don't want to be injured in your feet. And, obviously, Chet is very tall, and his foot is now very injured. Injured enough to keep him out of the 2022, you know, 2023 NBA season. And it's terrible news. I do think, again, it is concerning for the future. Um it's not anything that, you know, there's there's concerns about his body coming into the NBA. And this isn't related to that in, like, any way, shape, or form. But I just think it's an extra concern because now you have this super tall guy um, who his feet are, you know, now they don't work. Or one of them doesn't work, at least. And he's not, of course, going to be playing basketball for a while. Um and, you know, the real spin zone is if you're Oklahoma City and you just tank and try and get the number one pick again. <laughs> or not again because you didn't get it, but you know what I mean. Try and get the number one pick so then you can take uh, Victor Weminyama mm -hmm. and then you just have Victor and Chet as the, the two twin towers and you dare people to score on you inside. Right. Yeah, well, uh, Thunder's GM Sam Presti uh, had a meeting with reporters uh, earlier today, Thursday, uh, during an availability session uh, and talked about the fact that Holmgren will have foot surgery after they consulted with three of the nation's top foot specialists. Uh, he confirmed that he suffered a ruptured tendon in his foot, not a fracture, and noted that the Thunder were still optimistic about his long-term recovery, but that they would be extremely conservative right. about it. Uh, this is not unprecedented. We have seen this before. We saw it with uh, with Ben Simmons. We saw it with Blake Griffin. We saw it with Greg Oden. We saw it with Joel Embiid. Like, there's been big names that have been knocked out early and then came back. Obviously, Blake Griffin and Joel Embiid in that way. But then there's the Greg Odens who got knocked out early and never really came back. Obviously, we are hoping that doesn't happen to Chet. Uh, he has been enjoyable to watch his one year at Gonzaga, and it would be nice to see him uh, eventually, you know, next season, obviously, at this point. Uh, so hopefully he comes back healthy and is able to resume his NBA career. Yeah, we, I mean, we hope so. <laughs> obviously, you don't want to see him go through like what Greg, Oden, Greg Oden went through, or even Joel Embiid, who missed his first two seasons completely um, and didn't play basketball until, you know, his third year where he only played 31, 31 games that year. So you you hope it's nothing too serious like that. You know, obviously Embiid's been able to, to bounce back from it. Um, but he, as good as he is now, imagine if he had like two extra seasons of all NBA type numbers because my guess is he would have been pretty good from, from the jump. Um, and it just seems like that's, what's, that's what Chet is missing. And then he's going to have to wait a whole year 
to get into NBA action, whether it's a summer league next year or a preseason or the regular season or whatever it is. You know, it's just slowing your development a year. And not that that is, of course, the worst thing in the world because we've seen guys come back from it. But it's certainly something you don't want to happen. And we've seen it derail guys, and we've seen it, I guess, not really affect guys, to your point. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, last bit of NBA Roundup news coming out of the city that is known for producing drama. Usually it's on your television screen television screens and on purpose the los angeles lakers have traded taylor horton tucker and stanley johnson to utah for pat beverly ryan there's no way there's no way they're gonna allow this to happen there's no way they are gonna actually have pat beverly and russell westbrook on the same I'd team probably not there's no way but you could because you still have to find some way to take westbrook's contract and i know the rumor going around is Westbrook and then the two first um, to Indiana for Buddy Heald and Miles Turner. But, I mean, you, you, they're not like they have a choice of whether or not they want to play <laughs> together, right? And uh, the Lakers needed, you know, a backup guard and a starting guard. So make that what you will, which one of them is going to do, which one of them is going to do what. But I would like to be, you know, fly on the wall in those practices if those two end up you know, starting the season together because that would be fun. And there are a lot of guys who don't like each other on the basketball court but respect each other, you know, outside of it and can kind of keep the rivalry just within the confines of the uh, of the game. That does not seem like it's the case with Russell Westbrook and Patrick Beverly. Uh, you know, Patrick Beverly is kind of famously the guy that got Russell Westbrook uh, hurt in the playoffs when he it was a timeout. Westbrook went to go call the timeout, and Beverly like kind of slid in to try and get the ball, and that's when Russ uh, tore his ACL or his Achilles, whatever he did. Um, and Russ has always held the grudge since then. You know, I'm sure rightfully so in Russell Westbrook's mind. So I think these guys really don't like each other at all. Um, so you wouldn't think they'd be on the same team, but it's certainly possible, and I hope that that is what happens. Uh, yeah, what you're talking about happened way back in 2013. That is what kind of kicked this off. That's not what everyone remembers, obviously. Everyone remembers uh, later on in 2019 <laughs> when Westbrook's uh, with the Rockets and they defeated uh, Beverly, who was with the Clippers, and uh, James Harden dropped 47 points, and Westbrook coming out saying, you know, <laughs> talking about Pat Beverly's defense. Really oh, is. This is one of the great all-time ones, uh, even if it wasn't true, but – like Pat Bev tricking y'all, man. <laughs> like he playing defense, he don't guard nobody. He just running around doing nothing. Now it is a fantastic quote that has been remembered and will probably be remembered for a very long time. Uh, but if you actually went and in looking into it at, <laughs> at the time that Patrick Beverly guarded James Harden, James Harden went zero for six with four turnovers in those times that he was being guarded by Beverly. But no one cares. No one wants to get get in the way of a good story. It's way more fun to just think about what Westbrook said uh, and how him and Pat Bev have gone back and forth ever since. But taking it bigger, how does this help the Lakers? The Lakers are were a very bad defensive team last year, and Patrick Beverly has been one of the better defenders over the last you know five, six, seven years. Uh, you know he's they call him a three and D. He's a 33, 34% three-point shooter. Not great, not terrible. You know, average around 9, 10 points a game. He's not the outside shooters that the Lakers really need, but he can do a little bit for you, and his defense is helpful, so maybe it'll help a little bit. But th this ain't the move that gets the Lakers I over mean, the top, in my opinion. over the top, but I think they get a guy who is uh, a decent defender. You know, I, I don't think he's great, like maybe his, his reputation is, but... Um, he's also somebody who's just an irritant who can come in and get in those scraps that, you know, LeBron or Anthony Davis, you know, d don't want to get in. And I know last year uh, uh, Patrick Beverly wasn't, uh, you know, a, a real good three-point shooter, 34% last year, but he's been a pretty good three-point shooter throughout his entire career, you know, from 2016 to 2021. He shot at least 38% every year in that time frame and with twice going, you know, kind of just at 40%. So I think last year is more of an anomaly. And to to me, he's still a guy that can shoot. Um, 
you know, it sounds like you have a little bit less faith that, that his shot will come back. But to me, it's a guy who can help the uh, the Lakers and will probably get more open shots with the, you know, creation that LeBron James can um, can kind of generate. And Russell Westbrook, too, you know, if he ends up be, being on the team. Um, that is – so that that's how I think it helps the Lakers. They get somebody who can defend, and they get somebody who can theoretically shoot three-pointers, although he couldn't last year. Uh, throughout his career, he's been a pretty reliable three-point shooter.